We are going to hear from Lou Rockwell on the founding of the Mises Institute and Ron Paul with his thoughts on the founding of the Mises Institute as well. But before, I know most of you are here for Tom Wood's talk today at lunch about Lou and about the founding of this organization. So to Lou Rockwell, I'm speaking tonight on behalf of all the patrons and donors and supporters and friends and family of yours here tonight uh, on behalf of Marty Rockwell and Pat Barnett, your longtime associates, on behalf of Judge John Denson, the great trustee at Auburn University who brought the Institute to Auburn, on behalf of the Mises Institute Board, for everything you've done to help revive the Austrian school, for putting Mises and Rothbard at the fore of that school, for putting the great Austrian economics works online for anyone for free, for supporting so many scholars and students over the years, for providing a platform for discussing anarcho-capitalism openly, secession openly, private law openly, for creating lourockwell.com as a truly independent, uncensored source for unapproved dissident thought, and most of all, for creating an intellectual home for thousands and thousands of people around the world. I would ask Dr. Paul to present you with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Lou Rockwell. <laughs> You're the gold standard man. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Ron. Congratulations. The gold standard man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Many years ago, uh, when I escaped college, uh, I took a job in Boston with a small publishing company, which uh, taught me pretty quickly that uh, if I was going to be happy in my work, I had to have an ideological dimension to it. It had to be advancing the cause of liberty, uh, or, and, uh, uh, or I wouldn't be happy. So I wrote to Neil McCaffrey, who was the, the founder and the president of Arlington House Publishers in, uh, New, York, in New, York, uh, New Rochelle, New York, and asked him for a job. And uh, he wrote back and he said he would like to have me come to New York and to to apply, and uh, so I did, and uh, we hit it off, and, and uh, he offered me the, the a job, and it was to be an editor, which is something I'd been interested in, uh, really from the time I was a, a very young boy, um, negotiating contracts with authors, coming up with ideas for books, and that sort of thing. And uh, so Neil, and, uh, it, was just a, it was a tremendous experience to work for him, uh, he, was, he was a great intellectual himself, as well as a brilliant businessman. And um, uh, he did me many great favors, but the one that I want to mention today is he, when he called me into his office and he said, Lou, how you, would you like to be Ludwig von Mises' editor? So, of course, I, I, I was uh, gobsmacked, but I said, I, I would love to do that. And he said that uh, he wanted to bring back into print three of Mises' books, uh, they were, were out of print, uh, omnipotent government, and uh, bureaucracy, and, and theory and history. And uh, also to fix some uh, uh, problems with the texts in one of those books, and to just work with Mises, work with Mrs. Mises, um, who was a tremendous force uh, for Misesianism and, and for good, I might say. Um, and so I had the great honor of working with them and bringing those books into print, and when, when, they, were, um, when they were available, the, the great Leonard Reed of the Foundation for Economic Freedom held a conference in, to celebrate the, the, the fact that these three books had come back into print. And uh, I don't know if uh, people here who remember the old fee, it was a magnificent building in, in, uh, in New York, north of New York City, and it had a gigantic kitchen, a gigantic dining room, uh, among, of course, many other things in their building. And so uh, uh, 
Leonard invited me to go first into the, get, the, get my dinner on the, on the tray. So I'm walking with the tray into the dining room, and there are two people in there, Ludwig and Margaret von Mises, at, the, at a table. So I went over and I asked them if I could sit with them and introduce myself to them, because I, I had dealt with them, uh, especially with her on the phone um, and by mail, but never in person. So that was the only time that I got to meet Mises, but um, it was obviously a thrilling experience. And uh, I always remember Murray Rothbard saying that Mises, and for that matter, Mrs. Mises, uh, came from an older and a better um, civilization than the, one, than the ones we had now. And uh, it was a tremendous, of course, a tremendous experience to meet him. He was so beautifully dressed, such beautiful manners, and that was true of Mrs. Mises, too. Again, they're just, uh, people from a, another era and a, and, and a better era. Um, so that was, uh, it was a tre tremendous experience to work for Neil. And uh, uh, I was offered a job uh, at another enterprise, which uh, turned out not to be exactly what they had advertised themselves to be. Um, but uh, while I was there, um, Mises passed away. And uh, of course, I was very, very saddened by that. But it was a number of years after that when I began to realize that I thought Mises was losing um, his reputation, not only as a great intellectual, but as a great man of, 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 of tremendous courage. I mean, just immense courage. And um, uh, so I, I, I was worried about that. And, but at this time, I was working for a place that had, it was a big place, a successful place, um, uh, the Law and Economics Center at Emory University, and I was the, the guy who ran the, uh, the place for, from an administrative sense. And I should have known that it was going to be bad because right near it, and I had to go right, right by it uh, every day when I went to work, uh, was the CDC. And then Fauci was already there, so I, mean, I should have known that the whole place was poison. Um, but I, as I was worried about, about Mises' reputation, I was worried about uh, the, the importance of his work. And I remember one day looking around, this, it was a good-sized place, looking around it and thinking, I could do this. And uh, so I, I, I uh, went into D.C. where I for, where I, uh, put, got, got the Institute's um, approval from the city government, uh, which, you know, that, that sounds odd for a libertarian, but uh, it's really the best place in the country to get a permission from, to have a business or a nonprofit. Uh, who knows why, what reasons, but anyway, I, I was able to get that. Then I, then I applied to the, to the, uh, uh, to, to the again, to the, the U.S. government um, for, the, for a 501c3 status. And in those days, you could get it pretty quickly. And I, 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 uh, I was successful, I think, in, in writing this sort of, plug. maybe some people would say I was fooling them, but I, I wasn't. I, I was, of course, helped by the fact that Mises uh, had, had been a refugee, and uh, they liked that. So... Uh, Got it, and when that happened, uh, I left the, the Law and Economic Center and uh, got to work to start the Mises Institute. And in those days, it, was, it consisted really just of an electric tape, typewriter on my kitchen table. But um, I, was, uh, I was defined very quickly. Uh, I should say I had a friend um, who was, uh, ran the Charles Koch Foundation for Charles Koch, and he'd been a friend of mine, and so I'd written him about this new institute, and I would appreciate their support. And he, he, he called me and he said, Lou, do you have any idea how, how much money we've spent to demolish Mises and to make Hayek the key figure in Austrian economics? And I, I said, no, but that was money ill spent. <laughs> and uh, he told me that he would do, they would do everything possible to oppose us, uh, which I think happened then and not so much now. Um, but uh, I think for a lot of people that would, have, that would have bothered them, but I must say it stimulated me. Uh, I thought it'd be great to have this gigantic operation trying to 
trying to oppose us. And uh, I, I, they told me, also, he told me, There's no, you're not going to raise money because everybody hated Mises. They all, he said, even Milton Friedman hated Mises. And I said, well, that would be a, a medal on Mises' chest <laughs> if that were the case. So. So I wrote everybody on my Rolodex, remember those? And uh, I got an immediate, tremendous response from people. Um, there were, it turned out, despite what I'd been told by this, by this gentleman from the, the Koch Foundation, that um, look, there were a lot of people who loved Mises, who had known Mises as a, as a man, and loved his work, and uh, had also uh, been worried about his standing and worried about the, the, the cause of Austrian economics. Uh, so that was, that was great. Uh, but I, I should say that uh, I'm leaving important, probably the most important aspect of my life outside of the Mises Institute uh, was when I had the chance to work for Ron Paul. I was his um, chief, chief of staff. And uh, when I left Ron and started the Institute, um, and he, was, he did something that's, I must say, unheard of in, uh, in fundraising. He signed a letter uh, promoting the Institute with the money to go to the Institute, and he sent that letter to his own list. And so we got about uh, more than $50,000 from that mailing run. And this is many, many, this is many, many years ago. And it was that money that, that started us off, uh, I, I must say, on a, on a good, in a good, good fashion. And um, I also thought uh, in those days, perhaps incorrectly, that the Institute needed a connection to a university. Um, so I, with the help of other people, went to colleges and universities all over the country who, seemed to be, who claimed to be conservative. Um, None of them were interested in us, needless to say. Uh, they pretty much you know, invited me out the door uh, when I would talk to them. And, but uh, there was one place that was interested in it. It was Auburn University in Auburn, Alabama. And uh, there was a board member, John Denson, Judge Denson, uh, who was our champion there. This was something he'd been thinking about himself for years. And uh, so he... he he brought about our connection to, to Auburn, and uh, we had many good years there, and he also protected us when they came after us, and uh, they, were not, they weren't able to harm us as uh, some other libertarian or conservative organizations had been damaged on college campuses when they turned more and more leftist, as of course they, they virtually all, all do now. And uh, so John, uh, we owe a lot to you, and uh, I want you to know that um, uh, anybody who sees you, and, uh, I tell them, you should see the other guy. <laughs> John always wins his fights, I might say. Uh, so, uh, so we moved to, moved to Auburn, and... Uh, uh, it was a good experience, and Mrs. Mises was not happy about that. She wanted us to be in New York, uh, but I, I said I, I didn't think we could afford it, and it was much more difficult to bring students there and many, many other reasons. Um, but Mrs. Mises was a strong supporter of the Institute, and uh, something else I did in the early days was to invite her to lunch at her favorite uh, restaurant in New York, which was the, was the Russian Tea Room and talk to her about it, about what I wanted to do for the, for the Institute. So she said, she said, uh, I'll, she said I'll, I'll be your, I asked her if she'd be our first chairman. And she said, I'll be your chairman, but I want you to promise me that you're never going to leave the Institute and you're always going to be dedicated to it. And I said, well, I, I did give her that promise that uh, that would never, ha never happen. And, I want to say she was such a great lady. She said to me, 
I know you only want my name, you know, that's all you're really interested in. And I, I said, well, I, I said, I do want your name, but uh, I want your guidance as well, because she was extremely smart, really a brilliant woman, and um, I was, gave us great guidance and just uh, for almost 10 years that she lived uh, after, after our luncheon. And uh, just a, a tremendous lady, she loved it. Marty, she loved Pat Barnett, and uh, so both of them were an aid to, to good, good relations with Mrs. Mises. And uh, again, she was somebody from you know, another era, but she worked so hard. Uh, I mean, Murray Rothbard, uh, some years later, said that she was a, she was a one-woman Mises industry, and she really was. I mean, she just dedicated her life to her husband while he was alive, and then after, of course, after his death. Um, so that uh, she, was, she was a great person. And the second person I talked to after Mrs. Mises was Murray Rothbard. And when I told him what I planned to do and I wanted him to be the academic vice president, he actually jumped in the air and clapped his hands. <laughs> I've never, I'd seen it on you know, movies or TV or whatever. I'd never seen anybody do that in person. But uh, he was, he dedicated himself to the Institute and uh, I must say, I still miss him every day. He was, he was uh, uh, so much fun, uh, just, just extraordinary. You couldn't be in his, his presence for more than several minutes before you were laughing. He uh, just, his sense of humor was just tremendous. And uh, of course, we heard from uh, Joseph Leonard today about Another aspect of just how what a great thinker Murray Rothbard was, uh, and here I edited the, the the newsletter he published these papers in, and I didn't I didn't realize what was going on obviously until I heard Joe today. So uh, that that was a great experience. We continue to learn from Murray. We continue to learn uh, new things uh, that Murray talked about, and uh, uh, like Mises. Uh, of course, he's, he's our, uh, the, uh, in a sense, the guardian saint of the Institute. And uh, those two men, just, really, just extraordinary. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's been a long, a long fight, but a, a fun fight. And the people who, who opposed us ideologically, uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center, for example, <laughs> other, other creeps. Um, <laughs> it was fun to fight them. And I must say, John Denson shows the kind of influence he had. When they came after us at the Southern Poverty Law Center, he phoned the head of it, and uh, they stopped. <laughs> so, again, John's a great man to have on your side. Uh, so I, I, I must say, these 40 years have gone by very quickly for me. Um, the, the things that took place 40 years ago just seemed like the other day, but I, uh, I'm thrilled to you know, have Jeff uh, running things now, and uh, I, we obviously are, are great scholars. Um, today, the, the, the board uh, voted to make uh, uh, Joe Salerno a, uh, a, member, a member of the institute of the board of, of directors. Um, not to not to vote, but yeah. to give us give us uh, make sure that we have a, the academic uh, view that uh, Joe can give us. And I could tell many stories about Joe, but I, I the one that sticks in my mind is I had the honor to go in after after. Um, Joey Rothbard died, and of course Murray had already passed away, um, to go and take care of their, their, their apartment, ship the books and papers to the Institute, the, f the furniture to, to Joey's uh, relatives in Virginia and all, all that sort of thing. But I mean, Murray had a reading chair in their living room and a table next to it. And on the top of the table was Joe's PhD, PhD dissertation. 
And uh, I, I, wish I, I wish I could have asked Murray, what were you looking at? Because obviously this has been a few years ago before uh, when, Joe, when, when Joe received it. But I thought that uh, that shows what, and of course Murray loved Joe and trusted him and thought he was a great economist. And he'd be very pleased to know that he was on, a, on our board um, helping guide us. So uh, I think the Institute has only started. I think that um, uh, there's tremendous, this is, this is now a worldwide operation. I mean, there are, the, the interest in Austrian economics is worldwide. And uh, once these creeps in Washington allow us, to, the foreign students to come to our programs in the summer, which they're now blocking, or, or people have to get uh, uh, shots, uh, which thank goodness they won't do, um, but that they're eventually going to have to stop that. We'll get our, our foreign students back. Uh, we have all our brilliant American students, and I think I think the future is very very bright for the Mises Institute, and um, uh, the su support of all of you here, uh, and of all you know, and of the many many thousands of others. Uh, it's going to keep us going, keep us growing, and uh, keep us achieving. And of all the, I've talked about various individuals who supported the Institute uh, intellectually, but you know, our, the people who support us financially uh, are not only, not only they're important, we'd go out of business very quickly uh, if they weren't helping us. And so, uh, we appreciate your support so much. Appreciate your being here. Uh, and uh, thank you. Thank you very, very much.